patch 4.2 arrives alongside the new Shadows of Change unit additions, here's some of the big changes. Starting with the Lizardmen, who got a pretty hefty battle update in various ways. First of all, Saurus and most of the army, apart from Skinks, have this new ability called Predatory Fighter, which increases their speed and melee attack once enemies that they recently fought have routed. This basically allows them to do a little bit more damage to routing units that would otherwise usually get away from them, especially useful for Saurus who only have 31 speed when some factions average speed is like 34, 35. So most of the army will get this buff when they route something only lasts 10 seconds, but a nice bit of extra damage to come from that. Skinks and Croxagores are now the best of friends as they've both gained the Spawnkin ability, which will help buff each other up when they are in close proximity. So the Skink version of Spawnkin will allow the Skinks to cause fear when there are Croxagores nearby. Although Croxagores already cause fear, so I'm not really sure how much use this is, but I guess it's nice to have. The Croxagore version of Spawnkin is a little more useful though, as it will boost their damage by 10% base and armor piercing, so it'll make them a little more dangerous, which is nice because Croxagores have always been a little bit underwhelming. Temple Guard have gained a new ability as well, Sacred Duty. This will allow them to cause fear and have an immunity to psychology when they are nearby a lord or hero. Star Chamber Guardians get a similar thing, but they will be unbreakable instead of just having an immunity to psychology. So again, another nice little touch up to a unit. Nothing crazy, just nice little bits here and there. The Bastilodons and the Solar Engine Bastilodon in particular have gained possibly the most powerful buff in this update, restoring vigor to nearby friendly units. So basically, that means more damage output overall, because the more vigor you lose, the less damage output you do, so this will restore that. As an example, look at this winded Feral Carnosaur as he runs past the Bastilodon, but oh, now he's active, because his vigor has been restored by simply being near the Bastilodon. Potentially a very powerful recovery tool. The Rampage ability has also changed, which does affect the Lizardmen. It used to just say this, which is kind of pretty vague, right? Doesn't really tell you exactly what it does. Well, now you have this on the Feral Carnosaur, for example, Feral Rage 1 and Feral Rage 2. Now, it's not far dissimilar to how it worked before under the hood, but now we can actually see what it does. As it says, Feral Rage 1, when you hit less than 75% health, you will have your first Rampage for 40 seconds, and then your second one will occur when you drop below 25% health for again 40 seconds. The unit will be uncontrollable, they'll attack a nearby enemy unit. If there is none nearby, it'll just run around randomly, which it didn't do before. It would just stand still if there was no enemies nearby. So a lot of the Lizardmen Feral units, if it says Feral on the name, it's got this trait, Feral Carnosaur, Feral Cold Ones, Feral Dreadsaurian, or in other factions, Feral Manticores, for example. So Rampage is now a little bit more assured than it used to be, a little less random. There are some downsides to this though, because Rampage is now a little bit more potent. It has been taken off some units like the Witch Elves, who will no longer Rampage stuff when they touch it as they used to, but they now have a one-time use activatable ability, Witch Brew, which will increase their damage output quite significantly and will make them Rampage, but doesn't cause the enemy units to Rampage, which was kind of always their selling point. The same thing with a few Slanesh units and the Slanesh army abilities have been changed as well, so we'll have to see how this change really affects everything. But yeah, a little bit of a rework for Rampage. Another change is some new types of abilities that units have. Immune to flanking is one for the Bastilodons, all the Bastilodons, as well as other units and other factions as well, but this makes you take no penalties when flanked, which I assume means no leadership penalties when flanked and no melee defense penalties when flanked. So in theory, they're just gonna be a bit tougher. There's also a new ability to make the Cavalry of Kislev a little bit stronger with Glorious Charge. This is on Winged Lancers and Griffon Legion, as well as a couple of Lords and Old Cetra the Imperishable, randomly. This will double charge bonus duration, which is already 13 seconds, so that should be 26 seconds of charge bonus. And if you don't know how that works, charge bonus is added to your melee attack and weapon strength when you hit a charge and then decreases over 13 seconds, but now it will decrease over 26 seconds, so you'll stay doing more damage for longer. And then enemy units take a leadership penalty as if they've been attacked in the flank. So in theory, a minus 16 leadership penalty even when you charge things directly in the face. So this should make Winged Lancers and Griffon Legion especially much more dangerous. There's also a new unit type for elemental beings, such as the Elemental Bear, although honestly it's pretty much just a reskin of the undead or demonic traits. The bear is no longer simply unbreakable, it now will take damage once its leadership is broken, like those other kinds of units. The Incarnate Elemental of Beasts and the Onyx Crowmen are the other two units with this trait. There's also a new revealed icon that shows you when your stalk or hidden units have actually been revealed. For example, using the new Zinch Lord that can reveal hidden enemies. Here's his ability being used and then you'll see 
Units which have stalk or are hidden in forest or unspottable will become revealed and they will have this little revealed icon showing that they are indeed not so invisible anymore. The Cathay statues have now also been classed as constructs, just like the Tomb King's constructs. Working in the same way, they're no longer just unbreakable. They are now a construct and will disappear in the same way. So a few new icons and things you might notice. Your retinas can now rejoice as the bloom issue has been fixed. So this shining blinding light that you see here, this is the old version. That's now fixed because they look like this now and you can actually look directly at your Empire Knights without the fear of going blind. So that's good. As a content creator, this has ruined many of my shots. So it's nice to have that finally fixed, even if it's two years goddamn late. Another visual issue that's been fixed, you know the kind of jaggedy corruption that you get? Weird square and staircase effects on the corruption meeting normal land. Well, now it looks like this. Much more natural, no more squares. Another visual issue that no longer has to offend you. Cathay has also had some pretty big changes to its tech tree. Some things have just outright changed and others have just been improved upon. For example, this inner speed technology gives plus 20% to Yang units. It used to give only plus 5%, so quite the increase. This final technology, the Dragon Emperor's Blessing, now gives plus 10 levels to lords and heroes that are recruited, where it used to be plus 2. So again, it's quite the increase. Some have just been added onto, like this one, Sentinel Rights. This used to just give five melee attack to Terracotta Sentinels. Now it gives the plus 10% missile resistance as well. What I have noticed from comparing the old and new tech trees is that a lot of the upkeep reductions have gone away. For example, this one, Moon Reflecting, used to give minus 3% upkeep for Yin units. Now instead, as you see, it gives plus 10 leadership. This one, Improved Husbandry, used to give minus 5% upkeep for Peasant Horsemen, Jade Lancers and Longmans. Now it's just charge bonus for Peasants and Lancers. So that's a handful of the changes. There are a load more as well. So yeah, a fair few of the upkeep reductions have gone away, but I think that's fine because Cathay generally do make a hell of a lot of money. you got all the caravans, you can get all the trade, so they don't really need the upkeep reductions so much, whereas their army in battle can struggle a little bit. It is one of the weaker armies in the game, I would say, so the stat boosts from those technology changes should hopefully help them out there. So that's most of the bigger changes coming with the patch. There is, of course, loads more changes in terms of balancing and changes to stats and units across all the factions. And then, of course, there's the additional units added to the Shadows of Change DLC in an attempt to make that more worth its asking price. I did a video on that yesterday. I'll link it at the end in a second. You can check that out if you wish. But just to show you a couple of the cooler things from that, for example, Katarin's new sled, the Ice Court sled pulled by these lovely horses. This is actually free LC as well, so everybody will get this. You don't need the DLC. There's also a new magic lore for the hags, the lore of hags. You can check out all the spells in that other video in a sec. But yeah, the DLC's got some nice additions. There's a lot of new mounts for lords and heroes as well, some cool new monsters. But yeah, I'll leave you there. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Here's that video if you want to check it out. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. I will see you with the future.